Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the Reconquest and fight the Scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Hello everybody and welcome to What's in the Box. Today myself and John are having a look at some more Grimkin from Hordes and today is the Death Knell. So this is their battle engine, yeah John? Yes. This All right. is awesome. <laughs> I'm going to pass this to you. Okay, why? Because I want to show people the shiny shiny Oh, box. I thought you were expecting me to read. Okay, thank goodness for that. I don't know you could read. Can I read? It? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so here's the box. This is a big scary machine. It looks amazing. I have read the background on this thing. And right, so you know the way in the Grimkin book most of the time, it's like a, a nursery rhyme or a fairy tale that's being yeah. told to people. Yeah. No, not this time. If you pass me that book, me I want to watch show the artwork for this while I tell the story. Okay. Because so. the story for this is really, really nice. Uh -huh. uh, we'll give you that. Oh, sweet. It's not an IOU. I, didn't I right. failed. Yeah. Fail. So here's the artwork of it going through a graveyard, right? The, the art style is friggin' beautiful. I love the little marching band. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure if they come with a model, though. Uh, they actually, do. they do, yeah. Yeah, they do. All right, so the story behind the death knell is actually set up as it's from the point of view of a fellow who's went to a tavern for the evening mm -hmm. and has heard this ominous ringing of a bell coming from the town. Okay. So, in a mildly tipsy stupor, everybody walks out to have a look. And they see this ancient creaking, you know, cart driving down the street. Yeah. Pile of corpses on the back, coffins. And the little uh, Grimkin at the front just playing a rather cheerful tune for the dead. Mm -hmm. And so some of the onlookers laugh and giggle, and, you know, and they start to follow it. Never to be seen again. Right, okay. And it's the, the final line of the or the final paragraph of this is what I want to read out. For my part, a, a lump had grown in my throat, and I remained silent as the grave. My gran always told me not to laugh when the corpse, car corpse cart rolls by, nor to speak, nor even mutter or breathe. For the hunched driver upon the coach keeps his eye out for the living who might soon join the dead. Mm. So it's kind of a Pied Piper story. It is a bit, yeah. It's yeah. like, if you disrespect the dead, you're doomed to join them, so come with me. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. But I, I thought it was just a very, very cool story. I love the background to the Grimkin, just mm. because it does have such a, a varied storytelling that it's people getting their comeuppance the whole time. Yeah. So it's, it's very cool. The miniature also is very cool. So if I open the box up... Now, the one thing I have to wonder is, is anyone going to be brave enough to actually do the purple glow that we're seeing on the painted version here? Now, I know it's Photoshop, but to actually try and do a good one would be interesting. Yeah, but it, it's so nice looking, though. I mean, to, to, do, to do this army justice, everything has to be dark, desaturated, mm. you know, with the, the, the few little touches of potentially little bright colour, the glow especially. You want that glow to look really sinister. Well, you see, th this is the thing. I always think the things that should glow, glow within this army. Eyes. Yep. Lanterns. Yep. And maybe magic casting. Yeah. And I think that's, that's about all that should glow. The rest should be really desaturated, down, dirty, like it's just fresh out of the grave. Mm -hmm. You know, something's just clawed its way up out of the earth. That's my thinking anyway. I totally agree. Okay, first things first. Privateer have done is instructions. So this one looks like it's a reasonably simple build. Yeah. And I love the little dude on front. Yeah, he is actually pretty cool. <laughs> it's a very, very, I want to say cute, but can I really call Grim King cute? You could. I could try. You could try. The inter might, internet might have me for it. Yeah. I'm talking to you, internet. <laughs> I'm talking to all the internets out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. We got our big base. It yep. is a battle engine, so it does have the arcs and stuff on it, but I think in the actual rules, that doesn't make a difference. Components-wise, it's a resin plastic hybrid kit. That's a resin metal hybrid kit. I love it a bit. Apologies. So I feel putting a post-it to my face, and you failed to identify what materials I, I, I are. I failed to word. You failed to word. I failed to word. Material. I failed to English. Yeah. Anyway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the first major component for this is actually the cart on the back of it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is chock full of details, you know, body parts. There's actually some pumpkins in here, screaming faces, the coffins. I mean, for the, the coffins, 
would you do them as if they were freshly pulled out of the ground or would you do it as if they had been just stuffed on the corpse carp a hundred years ago and left to rot? Uh, you're asking a question that has the same answer which would be yes to both because it would essentially be the same type of leathering and same type of look. Really? I, I would have thought if, so. If it's fresh out of the ground, it's going to be dark, it's going to be dirty, it's going to have mud clinging to it. If it's something that's been sitting on here for maybe a hundred years... Oh, you know you're way, thinking of doing like a dry rot sort of look to it? I'm thinking, you know the way wood goes like silver in like really dry heat and stuff? It's whenever like, it's just baked in the sun? It's almost, yeah, it's, it's sun bleached. Yeah. yeah. So I'm wondering which of those two would maybe look better for you, John? Uh, to paint the cart as a whole, what I'd do is I'd make the, the actual wood of the cart, mm -hmm. the dark and muddy right. look. And then, do yeah, do what you say with the coffins, I should make them look a bit more sun bleached. So both. Yeah, both both on the okay. one piece because it would be nice contrast. Fair enough. It would be very nice contrast. Okay. Uh, now, I like the design for these. These are the wheels for the corpse cart. Yep. And they've got a really nice sort of ornate-ish feel to them. They look like they were once well made, but now not so much. It feels like this cart used to genuinely be a hearse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you get two thereof. You then get the knock need nag. Now, I call it a knock need nag specifically because that's how it's described inside the flaw. Right. I feel so f sorry for this horse. Look at the size of that harness. That's yeah. overkill. Yeah, but it, it it's undead, so would it really notice? No, but it just... Oh. I mean, like, look at it. It's emaciated. I, or, uh, what's the word? Emaciated. Emaciated. There you go. Um, I don't feel sorry for it because it's undead, and if you try to show pity to it, it might just bite your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the, the chances of face biting are quite high. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. We've got a pair of little booties. Uh, so I'm guessing these are from our driver. Uh, yeah, probably. Possibly. Uh, now we're into some of the smaller components, so I'm just going to gently, gently. There we go. Me and every other model builder just went, why are you tipping them all out at once? Oh, I don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, yeah. hey, anyhow, <laughs> so we have the harness. Yes. So this is what's going to come forward from the actual corpse cart and hook into the horse. Yep. Nice simple design, should go together really easily. Yes. And the connection points should be simple enough to pull off. Yes. We then have these, which are some of my favourite parts, which are the lanterns that they, hang from it. Yeah, they are absolutely gorgeous. They've got such a nice ornate feel to them. Mm -hmm. Again, I think for these I would do them in like a really dark tarnished gold or copper. I'd actually just do them as wrought iron, so like really dark, like practically entirely black with a little touch of like silver to where they've been okay. touched. Yeah. I don't throw stuff about. Yeah. And then this, I believe, is suspension. Yeah. For one of, there are two of. Yep. And I keep dropping stuff. Yep. My hands are not working today. No, they are not. <laughs> uh, then we have our driver. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's nice. He's a sinister Mad Hatter type. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, if you paint this right and get the shadows right for underneath the hat, because it has to look really dark in beneath there with just two little red pinpricks looking out. Yeah. Well, uh, in other words, you, you just you would prime the whole thing black and just avoid that bit yeah. when you come to the rest of your paint. We then start to have some of our little dudes here are going to follow along, I believe. Our, our marching marching yes, band. Yes, our little grimkin. So this one has a tuba. Yep. The tuba. Uh, we then have the head for another one. Little top hat. He may, be the, he may be. Look the at tuba. that chubby little face. He may be the tuba guy. He, well, he's blowing his lips out. So oh yeah, no, he's not. He's the guy for the trombone. Ah, okay. There is a trombone. Uh, we then have this, which is the the bell. Mm -hmm. Now this I would quite probably pin, because if you look, your connection point right here is quite small. Yeah, but I, well, yeah. Let's we'll we'll see about that. We'll see. Well, whenever you build this, John, I'm going to ask you again if you pinned it or no. Yeah. Uh, we then have this. That is his seat. Yes. Uh, we have this. Which, which is the back of the cart. Okay. It's like the back, it's like the tailgate yeah. of the cart. We have the other suspension. Yes. We have a little vulture who sits on top, which is very cute. Why do you keep saying cute? Everything's cute to you in this. I'm it's trying like to... These, you know, these guys are the horror. These guys are meant to be like literal images from nightmares, and yeah. you're going, "That's cute." We have a little trombone. Is it cute too? It's a cute little trombone. <laughs> okay, it's a cute little trombone. We have the little guy who's walking with it and holding the other half of it. Mm -hmm. We then have a little drummer. 
The cute little drummer, Graham King? That's a cute little drum. Look, we... look at this little bowler hat. Tell me that's not a cute little bowler hat. Oh yeah, the, the bowler hat is nice. It's just the rest of them that <laughs> you can't really associate yeah. with cute. Uh, you've got a couple of legs to put onto the nag. Uh-huh. And then the other foot for our driver. So I'm, I'm not sure where these go now. Because I thought they were his feet. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. And then the other little bits for the groom kid. So, uh, John, pass me the iPad. I want to have a look at the rules quickly for this before we go away to build it. Yeah, I want, I want to read out the first rule, though. Is it just because you want to do the, the funny voice? I want the, to. The name of it. I want to do the voice. Okay. Can I do the voice? You can do the voice. Bring out your dad! <laughs> All right. Do you, well, you've started now. Read the rule. Oh, no. But it's the longest paragraph. <laughs> can I read? Enemy and when? No. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> when an enemy, living or undead model is destroyed while within this model's command range, command eight by the way, uh, this model gains a the destroyed model's corpse. When a friendly living model is destroyed by a continuous effect, an enemy attack or a collateral damage from an enemy attack while in this model's command range, this model gains the destroyed model's corpse token. This model can have up to five corpse tokens on it at any time. Mm -hmm. Handy. So what's the corpse, the corpse token resource do then? Uh, there are some who would use it as fury, and this thing can use them itself. So, mm -hmm. it has a rule called Death Beast. During its activation, this, metal, this model can spend corpse tokens to remove D3 damage points for each token spent. So if it is 5 on it, that's 5 D3. Yeah, That could be really handy. Yeah. Uh, in Tropic Force, while within 5 of this model, enemy models lose tough and cannot have damage removed from them. Mm. So again, that, that whole palming damage off mm -hmm. and you know, actually saying, no, 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 you're okay, heal up, heal up. You know, or trolls. Trolls are going to hate this. Yeah. You know, oh, you're tough. No, you're not. Uh, we then have Finisher. Okay. I assume this is like a, a Coupe de Grace sort of. Uh, kind of. This model gains an additional dice on damage rolls against damage models. So even if you chip one off something, this is getting an extra damage roll. Mm. The attacks are both magical as well, yeah. which is nice. Uh, we then have Special Delivery! Once per turn, at any time during its activation, this model can remove any number of corpse tokens and place them on a friendly faction model that can gain corpse tokens within five of it. So I could essentially pass out like five fury to something. Yeah. So like your, your warlock, pass out five fury. Here, have that, cast spells. Uh, Warmth of the Grave is its final one. While this model has one or more corpse tokens, friendly faction models gain plus two arm while within four of it. That's really handy. Plus one for each corpse token on this model. <laughs> so that could be a plus uh, seven. Yeah. That would be horrendous. And it has arm 18 to begin with. Uh, it's got a... Now, the Death Knot is not a ranged weapon. It is a melee weapon. Mm -hmm. It has a range of two. Power of four, power and strength ten. So you're not really going to hit jacks with this. I'll tell you that now. It's yeah. got, uh, I believe, 22 damage points. So it's pretty good. It's really just a nice support piece that's going to help your stuff fight better yeah. and work better. Um, points cost 13. It's a little pricey. It is a little bit. A little pricey. But it's a nice looking centerpiece. It is, and it will be a very nice painting project to have. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, John, it's your build project. So I think we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, John will have this built. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We are back, and John has got the death knell built. How'd it go? Uh... Good, bad, in the middle. I will say it took a little bit of time to balance the, the cart onto the harness bit and the axles, and it, it did take a bit of time, but it wasn't that hard. Okay. Like, yeah. the actual connection points are pretty good, mm. but... Well, let, let's, let's get a look. A so, you're on about... So, the wheels go onto the axle, the yes. axle goes onto the nag. Yes. And this goes on top. Yes. But, uh, but first, you actually have to yep. attach the suspension unit. Yes. Which it then goes on top of. Yes. Wow. So, it is... What I would call it is a little bit fragile. It's not the worst I've ever seen. It's mm. a fantastic model regardless. Mm. I but love the tilt that's actually on this. Yeah. <laughs> it makes it look like he's sitting so high up as if it's really weighed down. I have a feeling I've actually tilted it back too far because I, I find... I quite like how that looks though. I think I find some of it like almost scraping the ground. I'm trying to look at the... Yeah, I've tilted it way too far back. I I'm like that the though. It looks like it's overloaded. It does actually, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, checking yeah, the, the box. The out, bell arm. Got wrong. Huh? The bell arm. How oh, was that to go? The bell on? arm. Um, Did you pin it? No. Nope. Did you feel you needed to pin it? Um, I would say you probably would want to pin it, but okay. not necessarily. 
Right. Did we find out where those boots went? Yes, they are on a set of legs hanging off the back of the cart. Ah, there they are. I see. In all their gruesome glory. I see. Well, it's a lovely mini. It is. And it's got a horrible backstory. It does. And I don't know. I, I tell you what. I think this is one we have to pass out to the community. Who do you actually run this with? Oh yeah. So like synergies and stuff for yeah. Which for which of the the warlocks? from the Grimkin work well with this. It's something we haven't even begun to explore yet for Grimkin in exactly. here anyway, because we've just sort of looked at them and went, these models are so creepy, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> every time Lloyd walks past that star set that we unbox, he's just looking at it going, are we going to use those pumpkin guys? I wouldn't mind painting those. <laughs> Lloyd, if you paint those, you have to paint them all in play. You, you might do. Yeah, <laughs> like, like his saga. Oh, God. <laughs> well, there's his project for the year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I absolutely love this model. I really, really do. And I've been loving a lot of the Grimkin stuff, which is strange for me, because that's not really the aesthetic I go for. No, normally you're very much, you know, military, regimented, clean armor and stuff. I'm kind of liking this, because I could throw pigment powders at this all day. Mm. <laughs> mm. Here's the thing, though. This one in particular, you see if you were going to do like a painting competition diorama, mm. I think you could do some really nice stuff with this. You think so? Yeah, because you would have the... If you were to do the diorama like it's the story, yeah. to have this going down like a fantasy village street with the, the little Grimkin out in front and this just rolling along with, if you can get some generic civilians and just put them in like a, a tavern front watching it, one or two starting to walk and follow, I think that could make such a cool diorama. Yeah. Let's ask Privateer Press to make some like civilians. Have they ever made civilian miniatures? No? No, don't think so. No, that, that you would could, actually be an interesting one. You could probably convert some... What, disarm some soldiers, make them off duty? If you got a load of bare heads, like from mm. like anywhere else, yeah. and you got the likes of like the, the Kador standard infantry, because mm. all they're wearing is like great coats and stuff, you could find models that didn't have as much armor plate on them, you could yeah, probably maybe. pass them off. Uh, the other thing you could do is you could look at the Iron Kingdoms range, because they do have a lot of miniatures in there that are just in plain clothes. Yep, that oh, will well. work. Food for thought. Tell you what, everybody, drop your comments in below. Tell us which warlocks you would use this with and what synergies you've maybe used on the tabletop. We'll mm. move on. We'll see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.